And uh, this paper lays out the uh, basis for a new technology that we hope uh, will be important for fabricating machines at the uh, micron to nano scale. Uh, my group has been interested in uh, the mechanics of origami structures, and recently uh, Paul uh, published a paper on uh, using graphene to do kirigami. And so we got together and thought to ourselves, well, could we start to think about how to get uh, graphene to fold up into geometrical shapes that might serve as scaffolds or the basis for uh, machines at the micron and nanoscale. And so this is the uh, achievement that Mark uh, made was he made a bimorph, the world's thinnest bimorph, out of a single sheet of graphene and two nanometers of silicon oxide uh, that was uh, fused to it. The bimorph technology where you have two independent layers of material, uh, you introduce a strain into one of the layers relative to the other, that one wants to expand and that leads to a bending for the total stack. Okay, so once we have the devices in our probe station, we have a series of robotic arms that we can use to poke and prod them. So here I've got one of these arms and I'm pushing at, one of, at a hinge. This is a graphene glass bimorph bent at 90 degrees holding one pad vertical. And I'm coming in with my probe and I'm pushing it, causing the hinge to strain. And then when the probe comes off, it releases that stored up energy. So, so one of the very cool things about working with nanoscale origami is that it's fast. Things can take place much, much quicker because the, the hinges themselves are so thin. And typically, the amount of time it takes in order to, say, heat a bimorph or push chemicals into it scales with the thickness. Bimorphs that we make are completely uh, compatible with semiconductor technologies. And this is one of the crucial, I think, thrusts that uh, we wanted to focus on because that means that uh, these scaffolds can then later be interfaced with computer chip. So what we're building is, is a kind of exoskeleton for the electronics, where the exoskeleton is made out of a one atom thick sheet of graphene and a tiny layer of glass on top of it, the bimorphs that you've heard about here. In the nanofabrication facility here at Cornell, we could design a processor like the Intel 4004 that is small enough that it can fit on a machine, a device that we've made uh, again at the CNF um, that is a fifth of a hair diameter. That means that you can put the computational power of the spaceship Voyager on a machine that is smaller than the width of a hair. And that is fantastic. Physicists take first step towards cell-sized robots, an electricity-conducting environment sensing shape-changing machine the size of a human cell. Is that even possible? Cornell physicist Mark McEwen and Itai Cohen not only says yes, but they've actually built the muscle for one. With postdoctoral researcher Mark Miskin at the helm, the team has made a robot exoskeleton that can rapidly change its shape upon sensing chemical or thermal changes in its environment. And they claim these microscale machines equipped with electronic, photonic, and chemical payloads could become a powerful platform for robotics at the size scale of biological microorganisms. Could You could put this computational power of the spaceship Voyager onto a object the size of a cell. Then where do you go explore? We're trying to build what you might call an exoskeleton for electronics, said McEwen, the John A. Newman Professor of Physical Science and Director of Cavalier Institute at Cornell for Nanoscale Science. Right now, you can make little computer chips that do a lot of information processing, but they don't know how to move or cause something to bend. Their work outlined in graphene-based bimorphs for micron-sized autonomous origami machines, published January 2nd in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Michigan is lead author. Other contributors include Dave Mueller, the Samuel B. Eckert Professor of Engineering and doctoral students Kyle Dorsey, Barris Barkin, and Yi Mohan. The machines move using a motor called a bimorph. A bimorph is an assembly of two materials, in this case graphene and glass, that bends when driven by a stimulus like heat, a chemical reaction or applied voltage. The shape change happens because 
In the case of heat, two materials with different thermal responses expand by different amounts over the same temperature change. As a consequence, the bimorph bends to release some of the strain, allowing one layer to stretch out longer than the other. By adding rigid flat panels that cannot be bent by bimorphs, the researcher localized bending to pl take place only in specific places, creating folds. With this concept, they are able to make a variety of folding structures ranging from tetrahedra, triangular pyramids, to cubes. In the case of graphene and glass, the bimorphs also fold in response to chemical stimuli by driving large ions into the glass, causing it to expand. Typically, this chemical activity only occurs at the very outer edge of the glass when submerged in water or some other ionic fluid. Since their bimorph is only a few nanometers thick, the glass is basically all outer edge and very reactive. It's a neat trick because it's something you can do only with these nanoscale systems. The bimorph is built using atomic layer deposition, typically painting atomically thin layers of silicon dioxide onto aluminum over a cover slip, then wet transferring a single atom layer of graphene on top of the stack. The result is the thinnest bimorph ever made. One of their machines was described as being three times larger than a red blood cell and three times smaller than a large neuron when folded. Folding scaffolds of this size have been built before, but the group's version has one clear advantage. Our devices are built compatible with semiconductor manufacturing. That's what's making this compatible with our future vision for robotics at this scale. And due to graphene's relative strength, Michigan said it can handle the types of loads necessary for electronics applications. If you want to build this electronics exoskeleton, you need it to be able to produce enough force to carry the electronics. Ours does that. For now, the thinnest of tiny machines have no commercial applications in, in electronics, biological sensing, or anything else. But the research pushes the science of nanoscale robotics forward, McEwen said. Right now, there are no muscles for small scale machines, he said. So we're building the small scale muscles. This work was performed at the Cornell Nanoscale Facility for Science and Technology and supported by the Cornell Center for Materials Research, the National Science Foundation, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, check that out, and the Cavalry Institute at Cornell. It's happening, folks. It's happening. It's been steadily progressing since IBM's uh, nano picker or the ion picker back in 1985. So it's been 35 years, 33 years that they've been working on this. And you can see how it's advancing to where you can make a machine, uh, an active machine the size of a, well, a small neuron, a small cell. So this has the ability to actually do surgeries and other kind of stuff, whatever kind of information you want to put on it. When you marry that with uh, local scale, may maybe impossible AIs, you can have a whole bunch of smart nano cells or nano cells uh, flowing through your bloodstreams, repairing everything. This is the future. It's happening. Like they say, oh, it's happening, sweetheart. But it's just one more brick in the wall. It's one, one more log on the fire. And if we're doing it, you can best believe that the Chinese, if they're not already doing it, they have it on the uh, books already. Because once this stuff is published, they have to go out and try to copy it. So the race is on. Things are going to change. And this is just like I said, this is just one more factoid on the way. But with that, I'm going to make this short and sweet. This is BGS out and I'll see you guys on the next one.